This video demonstrates preparing and submitting a traditional XBRL and an inline XBRL filing using Edgar Suite software. First, we'll provide initial information for the filing, such as the registrant CIK and the taxonomy on which the filing should be based. Then, we'll tag the cover sheet. After that, we'll tag the financial tables consisting of the balance sheet, income statement, statement of stockholders' equity, and statement of cash flows. Next, we'll tag the notes to the financials, including block tagging of the notes, tagging the policies, the schedules or tables in the notes, and finally the detailed tagging of the narratives. Then, we'll look at how Edgar Suite validates the filing, and how you can easily correct errors, if any. Also, we'll take a look at how Edgar Suite produces an SEC rendering of the filing right on your computer, without having to upload the filing to the SEC previewer. This includes traditional XBRL, as well as inline XBRL rendering, using the same rendering engine used by the SEC on the Edgar website. And finally, we'll submit the filing, using Edgar Suite's automated submission module. We'll demonstrate how the filing can be submitted in traditional XBRL, or, in the inline XBRL format. We'll start with this 10Q filing document, shown here, opened in Microsoft Word. Once Edgar Suite is installed, a tab named Edgar Suite, appears in the Word ribbon. This tab includes controls that enable you to work in a familiar Microsoft Word environment. The first step in preparing the XBRL filing, is to specify basic filing information, such as the registrant CIK, trading symbol, etc. To do so, click the button for the taxonomy on which the filing is based. In this case, the taxonomy is US GAAP. This places an XBRL header, at the top of the Word document. Enter the basic XBRL filing information into this header. Now, in the Edgar Suite tab, click the Send button, to send this information to the Edgar Suite software. The software is now set up to tag the document. Note, although the XBRL header is visible, it is content that is hidden in Word, and does not appear when the document is printed, or Edgarized. You can show, or hide, the header at any time, by clicking the Codes button, in the Word ribbon. Next. We'll tag the cover sheet. First, select the entire cover sheet. Then, tag it as a whole, by clicking the cover button, in the word ribbon. Notice, that a tag has been placed around the cover sheet. Next, Tag the details in the cover sheet, by picking the XBRL concepts from the standard taxonomy. To do so, open the standard taxonomy presentation tree. The presentation tree is displayed. Scroll down, to the document information node. First, tag the document type, that is, 10Q. To do so, Select the document type node in the presentation tree. Then, select 10Q, in the Word document. Now, in the Edgar Suite tab, click the Gen button to tag this content. Notice, that a tag has been placed around 10Q, identifying it as the content of the document type tag. Next, Tag the period ending date. To do so, first select this date on the cover sheet. Then, select the concept, in the presentation tree. Now, tag the content. This can be done as before, 
by clicking the Gen button in the Word document Edgar Suite tab. It can also be done by clicking the Tag button in the Presentation tree. Notice that the period ending date is now tagged. Next, tag the entity information in the cover sheet. To do so, first expand the entity information node in the presentation tree. Without further comment, I'll now tag the entity information, starting with the registrant name. State. IRS number. And so on. File or category. Shares outstanding. Par value. Notice, in the last paragraph, that the tags for shares outstanding and par value must also include the October 10, 2017 date. There are several ways of doing this. The easiest is to select the date and then Control shift click the Context button in the Word ribbon. The date is now merged into the tags in the paragraph. The cover sheet is now tagged. Note that the XBRL tagging is embedded in the Word document as hidden codes. These codes do not interfere with printing or Edgarizing the document. You can turn the display of these codes on or off at any time by clicking the Codes button in the Edgar Suite tab. Also, you can change the font size of these codes by clicking the minus and plus buttons. And you can control click these buttons to quickly switch between small and large. Having finished the cover sheet, we'll now proceed to tag the financial statements. Here is the balance sheet. First, select the complete table to tag it as a whole. Then, in the presentation tree, select the statement of financial position. Now click the statement button in the word ribbon. The software provides two choices for the title of the statement. I can select one of these or type in one of my own. In this case, I'll select the content picked up from the Word document. Notice that the balance sheet has been tagged as a whole. Next, tag the dates. To do so, click one of the dates. Then, shift click the context button in the Word ribbon. Notice that the date is tagged. I'll tag the other date the same way. Both dates are now tagged. Notice that the tagging specifies the end and start of the reporting fiscal period and not the actual dates. This is a huge advantage when the tagging is carried over into subsequent quarters, since although the dates will change, the tagging does not change. Next, I'll tag the rows or line items using the standard taxonomy presentation tree. I'll first expand the first few line item nodes in the statement of financial position. Now, select the assets abstract node in the presentation tree. Then, click the assets heading in the balance sheet. Now click the Gen button in the Word ribbon to tag this line item. Note that the Assets heading has now been tagged. 
Without further comment, I'll now tag the next few line items the same way. Now, for the next line item, option to acquire MNO products, let's say that I need to create a custom tag, in the extension taxonomy. To do so, first switch to the extension subtab in the Edgar Suite window. The extension concept that I am creating, is for an asset, which is a monetary item, having a period of type instant, and balance of type debit. I can select these attributes individually, or I can just click Asset. Now, I need to provide a name, and label, for the extension concept. I can enter this information into the fields provided, or I can let the software decide that from the line item. I'll take the latter approach. To do so, first click the line item, in the balance sheet. Next. Click the extension button, in the word ribbon. Note, that the software automatically creates a name, and label, for the concept. I'll now enter a reference documentation, for this extension concept. The extension concept has now been completely specified. And I can tag the lion item, by clicking the gen button, in the word ribbon. The lion item is now tagged, with an extension concept I just created. The newly created concept can be seen in the extension schema tree. I'll now continue to tag the rest of the balance sheet. Further down, in the balance sheet, there is parenthetical data, related to preferred shares and common shares. This data must also be tagged, as parenthetical data items. To do so, click the Taglets button, in the Edgar Suite window. This opens the Taglets window. In this window, I can combine various components of a tag, called Taglets, for more complex tagging. First. I'll select the par value of preferred shares. Then, select the corresponding tag, in the taxonomy tree. Notice, that the concept is transferred into the taglets window. Click the parenthetical button, to identify this as parenthetical data. Now, the par value is given, for the end of period, and start of period. First I'll specify end of period, by typing E into the time field. I can now tag the parenthetical data item, by clicking the tag button. Notice that the data item has been tagged. I'll now tag the same data for start of period. Everything is already set up, I just need to change the time field to S, and click the tag button again. That completes the tagging of this data item. Without further comment, I'll now tag the remaining parenthetical data items the same way. And so on. All parenthetical data for preferred shares has now been tagged. Notice that the word, no, can be tagged, as it appears in the document. The software automatically translates it to zero for XBRL. I'll now tag the parenthetical data for common shares the same way. And so on.
So, following these procedures, I have tagged the whole table. Note that I tagged the line items and time periods, but not the actual numbers. This is referred to as smart tagging, and I need to indicate that this is a smart tag table. To do so, select Smart Table in the Taglets window. Then, click in the top left cell of the table and control click the tag button. That completes the tagging of the balance sheet. We'll now proceed to the income statement. Here is an income statement with four periods reported. Instead of tagging each period individually, you can select all four periods and tag them in one operation by clicking the context button in the word ribbon. Notice that all four periods are tagged. As with the balance sheet, the time durations are tagged as quarters and fiscal periods, rather than hard-coded dates. As another example, I'll tag exploration costs by having the software find the appropriate tag in the taxonomy. To do so, click the line item, then click Find in the Word ribbon. The Edgar Suite software rapidly searches the entire taxonomy and displays a list of possible XBRL concepts, or tags. The most likely tag is highlighted. I can accept the highlighted tag, or select a different one. I can also get additional details about the tag, by clicking the Details button in the Edgar Suite window. The software then provides extensive details about the selected tag, to help you make an informed decision. Once the appropriate tag has been selected in this manner, tag the lion item by clicking the Gen button in the word ribbon. Notice that Exploration Costs has now been tagged. The rest of the income statement can be tagged using the procedure shown so far. This completes the tagging of the income statement. Next, we will tag the statement of shareholders' equity, shown here. First, we will tag this statement as a whole. As seen here, that completes the tagging of the statement as a whole. We will now proceed to tag within the table. Like the balance sheet and income statement, this table is also smart tagged. The table is now marked as smart tagged. Next, we will tag the column headings. These are members in the Equity Components dimension. I will navigate to and expand this dimension in the presentation tree. Select Common Stock. In the table, select Common Stock, Shares and Amount. Then, click the Gen button in the Word ribbon to tag these column labels. The common stock shares and amount are now tagged. I will now tag the next two column headings the same way. The last column heading, Total, should be tagged as the Equity Components domain, which represents the total of all the dimensional members.
that completes the tagging of the column headings. Next, we will proceed to tag the line items. This equity table reports two time periods. The reporting fiscal year and the prior fiscal year. We'll start by tagging the equity balances at the start and end of these periods. To do so, I will first navigate to and expand the line items note of the statement of shareholders equity in the presentation tree. Next, select shareholders equity beginning balance while pressing the Alt key, which picks up not only the tag, but also the start of period. Then tag the line item as usual. Notice that the starting balance has been tagged, and it includes a taglet for the start of period role. This tag, which is a monetary item tag, applies to the entire row. However, the number of shares in the shares column requires a different tag. I will tag that number with the taxonomy tag for shares outstanding, start of period. The complete row for starting balances is now tagged. I will now tag the ending balances for both periods the same way. Notice that the ending balances for both periods are now tagged, and those tags include the end of period role. Next, I will tag shares issued to acquired property. This row also has dollar and shares values. Without further comment, I will tag the other line items the same way. Note that some rows can have only dollar amounts, and some items appear in both periods. Shares issued for other expenses. Shares issued for services. and so on. All line items are now tagged, and we are done with the presentation tree. We will now tag the two time periods. To do so, switch to the time sub tab in the Edgar Suite window. Select fiscal period for the period of the report. Then, in the Word document, select the line items corresponding to this period. Now, shift-click the Gen button in the Word ribbon to merge the time taglet into the tagging of these line items. Note that the taglet for the fiscal period has been merged. We will now select the prior period and tag the corresponding line items the same way. The equity statement is now completely tagged. I will reduce the tag font size so you can see the whole statement.
We now proceed to tag the cash flow statement, shown here. Two of the line items in this table include footnote references. The rest of the table can be tagged using the procedure shown before. To tag the first footnote, type or copy the text of the footnote into the footnote field in the taglets window. In this case, I will copy and paste the text. Select the text and press Ctrl C to copy it. Then, click in the footnote field and press Ctrl V to paste it. Now, click the line item and then shift click the tag button to merge this footnote into the tagging of the line item. Notice that the footnote has been merged into the tagging. This method of tagging a footnote works for traditional XBRL but is not permitted in inline XBRL. The second method, which I will use for the second footnote, works for both traditional and inline XBRL. To tag using the second method, first clear the taglets window by clicking the clear button, then select footnote in the level drop down box. Then, type an ID for the footnote into the ID field. The ID can be any word, but it must be unique for each footnote in the filing. Now, select the text of the footnote and click the tag button to tag it with this ID. Notice that this footnote has been assigned the ID F2. Then, clear the taglets window, and in its footnote field, type this ID enclosed in curly brackets. The curly brackets indicate that F2 is the footnote ID, and not the text of the footnote. Now, click the line item, then shift click the tag button, to merge this footnote reference, into the tagging of the line item. Notice that the line item tagging now includes a reference to the footnote with IDF2. That completes the tagging of this cash flows statement. We now move on to tagging the notes to the financials. First, we will do level 1, that is, block tagging. Shown here are the notes to the financials in a Word document. We will block tag the first note, Organization and Nature of Operations. To do so, I will first select this note, in the standard taxonomy presentation tree. Next, select the note, including its title, in the Word document. Notice that I don't have to worry about page breaks, footers, page numbers, etc. Edgar Suite automatically excludes them from the note. Now click the L1 button in the Word ribbon to tag the selected note. Edgar Suite displays a list of possible titles for the note. You can select one of these, edit them, or enter a title of your own. I will select the title derived from the note content, that is, the title as it appears in the document. Notice that the note has been block tagged, that is, tagged at level 1. Now, let's go to the next note. Without further comment, I will tag the next note, Accounting Policies, the same way.
This note is now also tagged. The remaining notes can all be tagged following this procedure. We will now tag the policies, that is, do level 2 tagging. Shown here, is a note on accounting policies. This note contains several policies, which must each be tagged. The process of tagging them is very similar to block tagging of the notes. The main difference is that instead of the L1 button, we will click the L2 button, for level 2. I will start, by tagging the first policy, basis of presentation. That applies a level 2 tag, to the policy. I will now tag the second policy, foreign currency translations. The second policy is now also tagged. Most policies, such as those on this page, appear in the disclosure note on accounting policies. However, other notes may include policies as well. For example, let's look at the disclosure note, on fair value of financial instruments. The first five paragraphs, in this note, discuss the fair value measurements policy. We will tag this policy, using the same procedure as before. In this case, the policy text did not include a title. So we can either enter a title in this window, or accept the one from the taxonomy. I will use the taxonomy title. Notice, that the policy is now tagged. Using these procedures, all the policies in the filing can be tagged, at level 2. Now we proceed to level 3 tagging, that is, tagging tables or schedules as a whole, within the notes. Shown here, is a note, which includes a table or schedule, of fair value assumptions used for derivative liability. This table must be tagged, as a whole, called level 3 tagging. The procedure is similar to tagging at levels 1 and 2. First, locate the appropriate table text block concept, in the standard taxonomy presentation tree. Then, select the table in the document, including its title. Now, click the L3 button, in the word ribbon, to tag this table. Enter or choose the title. That tags the table. Here is another table that needs to be tagged at level 3. This one does not have a title. I will proceed to tag it the same way as the previous two. This table did not have a title in the Word document. I can use the title from the taxonomy, but in this case I will type in my own. The table is now tagged, at level 3. Here is a note, with another table that needs level 3 tagging. Let's say, that in this case, there is no appropriate table text block tag in the standard taxonomy. So, we will create an extension taxonomy concept for this purpose. To do so, switch to the extension subtab, in the Edgar Suite window. Enter a label for the new concept, and press enter. Notice, 
that Edgar Suite automatically sets the data type to text block. That's because the label starts with the words schedule of, implying that it is for a level 3 tag. The software will also automatically append the table text block suffix to the tag name when the concept is created. I will now enter reference documentation for this extension concept. Now that all the details for the extension concept have been specified, I will select the table in the Word document and click the L3 button in the Word ribbon to tag it. Notice that the table has been tagged. We now proceed to level 4 tagging also called detailed tagging, of the notes to the financials. Let's start by tagging some of the details within the tables or schedules, that appear in these notes. Shown here is a table of fair value assumptions. Tagging this table is very similar to tagging the primary financial statements. However, I will take this opportunity to show some additional Edgar Suite features, that make it very easy to locate taxonomy concepts, and tag efficiently. First, I will indicate that this table is smart tagged by inserting the smart taglet into the left cell of the table. Next, I will tag the date in the column heading by shift clicking the context button. Now, I will tag the row labels, starting with risk-free interest rate. Rather than navigating the standard taxonomy, I will use the Find button, to look for matching standard taxonomy tags. Edgar Suite instantly searches the entire taxonomy, and locates several matching tags. The most appropriate tag is highlighted. We could apply this tag right now, but instead, we will locate where exactly, in the standard taxonomy, this tag appears. That way, we can have a better understanding of how the taxonomy treats this table, and also, the other line item should be near this tag in the taxonomy. To locate this tag in the taxonomy, right-click it, and then click, List Occurrences in Standard Taxonomy Presentation. Edgar Suite immediately displays all occurrences of this tag in the taxonomy. In this case, it appears only once, under Fair Value Measures and Disclosures. Now, click this occurrence, to directly get to it in the taxonomy. Here is the tag, highlighted, in the taxonomy tree. It is already selected, so we can tag the line item in the Word table, by clicking the Tag button. The risk-free interest rate is now tagged. We can now proceed to tag the other line items, the tags for which are nearby, in the taxonomy tree. That completes the level 4 detailed tagging of this table. Here is another table that needs to be detailed tagged. It breaks down the amounts due to related parties, on different dates. All the numbers represent the same single XBRL concept, that is, amount due to related parties. The columns correspond to different dates. The rows represent different related parties, with the last row being the total. In XBRL, these related parties are members of the related parties dimension. As we have done before, we will smart tag this table, and place the smart taglet in the top left cell of the table. W since the entire table reports the same XBRL concept, we will place that concept in that cell as well, so that it applies to the whole table. First, click the top left cell. Then, select Smart Table, in the Taglets window. Now, 
select the XBRL concept, due to related parties, in the standard taxonomy presentation tree. Notice that the taglets window now includes the smart table taglet and also the US GAP concept for amount due to related parties. Now click the tag button to tag the top left cell of the table. We will now tag the column headings using the context button to tag the dates. Now, let's create members for, and tag, the related parties. First, select the related parties dimension, in any of the taxonomy trees. Then, click the extension button, to set up for creating new members in this dimension. Edgar Suite displays the extension taxonomy dimensions tree, where custom members of dimensions are created and displayed. We will now, simultaneously, create members for, and tag, each of the row labels. To do so, first select the relevant rows. Then, in the word ribbon, click the extend and tag button, to create members for, and tag, each of these cells. Note that the required members have been created and the line items have also been tagged. The last line item represents the total. It should be tagged with the domain that covers all the members. That completes the tagging of this table. Here is another example of a table that needs to be detailed tagged. In this case, the columns correspond to different XBRL concepts, while the rows correspond to members of the class of financing receivables dimension. In this table, the principal balance is in thousands. To tag the principal balance, click inside the column heading, then select its XBRL element in the standard taxonomy presentation tree. This enters the element tag into the taglets window. In this window, select precision of thousand, then click the tag button to place the tag into the Word document. The principal balance is now tagged, with the tag name, and precision. The rest of this table can be tagged, using the procedure shown before. As another example of level 4 detailed tagging within tables, here are two tables reporting derivative conversion option liability, at end of period, and start of period, respectively. In this example, I will demonstrate that tables do not necessarily have to be smart tagged. Sometimes, it is easier and quicker to just tag the numbers. First, select the XBRL concept, liabilities fair value disclosure non-recurring in the standard taxonomy presentation. Then, in the liability class dimension, select the derivative financial instruments liabilities member. Note, that the taglets window now includes the XBRL concept, and dimension. Type, E, into the time field, for end of period. The taglets in this window, are now set up to tag the numbers in the first table. Select the numbers, and click tag. Now type, S, into the time field, for start of fiscal period, and similarly tag the numbers in the second table.
We will now include the measurement level dimension. Select the level 1 member in the standard taxonomy. Merge this member into the level 1 numbers in the table by shift clicking the gen button in the word ribbon. Include the level 2 and level 3 members the same way. That completes the level 4 detailed tagging within these two tables. We will now look at level 4 detailed tagging within the narratives in the notes to the financials. Let's look at the first note on this page, liquidity and going concern. The second paragraph in this note contains several material facts that must be tagged. To make things easier, I'll move the standard taxonomy presentation tree window and bring it closer. First, I will tag the company's current assets. To do so, click the number to be tagged, click the element in the taxonomy, and then click the tag button. Notice that the number is now tagged. That's all there is to it. Next, I will tag the long term assets. The narrative indicates that the company has no long term assets. We can tag the word no, and the software will automatically convert it to zero for XBRL. Next, we will tag the company's 39 employees. Again, we can tag the word 39. Edgar Sweet will automatically convert it to a numeric value. Now, we will tag the notes payable to related parties, a value of 1.3 million. We can tag the phrase 1.3 million just as it appears in the document. Edgar Sweet will automatically convert it to a number as required by XBRL and will also automatically Assign it a precision of 100,000. Let's now look at the accumulated deficit. The corresponding XBRL concept is retain earnings or accumulated deficit, and if the reported fact is a deficit, then the numeric value should be negative. To tag the deficit, click the number. Then click the element in the standard taxonomy presentation tree. Notice that the concept has been entered into the taglets window. Now, in this window, check the sign reversal checkbox, then click the tag button to tag the number. The deficit has been tagged. And the tag includes a sign reversal taglet, so the sign will be reversed when the XBRL filing is prepared. The last material fact in this paragraph is the interest rate on notes payable, which ranges from 9.8% to 16.5%. With Edgar Suite, you can tag the minimum and maximum limits of the range in a single operation. The software automatically sets up and uses the range dimension for these facts. As we did before, select the numbers, and click the element in the taxonomy tree. In the taglets window, check the range checkbox, then click the tag button to tag the data. Notice that the range of interest rates is now tagged, and the tag includes an indication that the data content is a range of numbers. 
that completes the detailed tagging of the material facts reported in this narrative paragraph. Now, let's look at the note on property and equipment shown here. We need to tag the depreciation during the most recent and one year prior quarters and the most recent and one year prior nine month fiscal periods. Select the depreciation element in the standard taxonomy. Notice that the element is transferred into the taglets window. In the time field, enter Q for quarter. Now select the first number and tag it by clicking the tag button. Notice that the number is tagged as depreciation for the quarter. Now, tag the other three numbers the same way using time codes of minus Q for the prior year quarter and F and minus F for the current and prior year nine month fiscal periods. That completes the tagging of the depreciation numbers in this paragraph. Now, let's look at the equity note shown here. The first paragraph details stock issued and share price on two different dates. First, tag the numbers of shares and share prices. Now, select the first date, February 8, 2017, and click the context button. Notice that the date is transferred into the Edgar Suite window. Now select the first part of the paragraph and merge this time into its tags by shift clicking the Gen button. Notice that the February 8, 2017 date is now included as the time context within the tags in the first part of the paragraph. Complete the tagging in the second part of the paragraph the same way. That completes the tagging of the details in this paragraph. Now, let's look at the note on share capital, shown here. The first two paragraphs report the number of shares issued, par value, and share price, on two different dates. The last three paragraphs report the number of shares issued, and shares value, during different time periods. First, we will tag the number of shares, share price, and par value, in the first two paragraphs. Number of shares issued. Share price. Par value. Now, we will tag the number of shares and shares value in the last three paragraphs. Number of shares. Value of shares. To complete the tagging, we need to merge the dates or time periods of each of these transactions into the tagging of each respective paragraph. Select the date of the transaction in the first paragraph. Now, Shift Control click the context button to merge this date as the time context into all the tags in this paragraph. Notice 
that each of the tags now includes the date of the transaction. Complete the tagging of the second paragraph the same way. In the last three paragraphs, the times are periods, rather than single dates, but the process of merging them into the tagging is exactly the same. Notice that the appropriate time periods have been merged into the tagging. That completes the tagging of the narratives in this note. Now, let's take a look at this note, Loans from Related Parties. This note has several details about loans from three related parties. Without comment, I will first tag each such detail with its XBRL concept from the standard taxonomy presentation tree. Issuance date. Issuer. Description Face Amount Interest Rate Payment terms. All the details are now tagged with their XBRL concepts. We now need to associate each loan with its related party. To do so, we need to create a member for each related party, in the related party's dimension and then insert this member into each of the tags that go with that related party. Edgar Sweet makes this very easy, by creating the member, and merging the tagging, in one single operation. First, select the related party's dimension, in any taxonomy tree. I will use the segments tree, which lists all the available dimensions in one place. Now click the extension button, to create members in this dimension. In the Word document, select the name of the first related party, then shift Control click the extend and tag button. This will create the extension member, and merge it into all the tags in this paragraph, all in one single operation. Note, that the related party member has been included in every tag in this paragraph. The other two paragraphs can be completed the same way. That completes the tagging of the details in this note. And now, let's take a look at the note on subsequent events, shown here. There are four events being reported. I will first tag the descriptions, and dates, of these events. Event Description Event date.
The last event is starting and ending dates. So we will tag these dates as a range, using the taglets window. The subsequent event descriptions, and dates, are now all tagged. We now need to differentiate these events, by making each event a unique member in the subsequent events dimension. Select the subsequent event type axis, and then click the extension button to create the members. In the Edgar Suite window, Label field, type a label for the first event, and press Shift Enter to create the member. Now, select all the tags in the first event, and shift click the Gen button to merge this member into those tags. Notice that the tags for the first event now include the member specification. Without further comment, I will memberize the other events the same way. The third event spans the entire paragraph. We can just click inside the paragraph, then Ctrl Shift click the Gen button to merge the member specification into all the tags in the paragraph. I will complete the tagging of the last event the same way. That completes the level 4 detailed tagging of the narratives in this note. Now that the basic tagging of the filing is done, we will move on to specifying the calculation and presentation relationships in the filing, using the balance sheet and statement of cash flows, as examples. Shown here, is the balance sheet, which we had tagged in an earlier demonstration. I will start with a simple example. I will set up the calculation that liabilities and shareholders' equity is equal to the sum of total liabilities and total shareholders' equity. First, click the sum. In this case, it is total liabilities and shareholders' deficit. Then, in the Edgar Suite window, switch to the Structure sub tab and click the Get button. Notice that the sum element is transferred into the sum to field. I will now merge this into the liabilities and into the shareholders' equity or deficit line items by selecting each line item and shift clicking the Gen button. That completes the setting up of this simple calculation relationship. I will click the Show button to show the details of the tag in the shareholder's equity or deficit line item. Notice, the tag now indicates that stockholder's equity summates into liabilities and stockholder's equity. This can also be seen in the taglets within the tagging. This method of specifying calculation relationships can be used between elements anywhere in a filing, within tables, or in narratives. However, Edgar Suite offers a quicker and far more efficient method to specify calculation and presentation relationships between line items in a table. Consider the assets reported in this balance sheet. All line items in the assets block add up to total assets, the last line in the block. I can assert this by selecting these line items and then shift clicking the structure button in the word ribbon. If the first line item is a heading item, then clicking the structure button identifies it as the parent of all the line items that follow. Further, the shift key identifies the last line item as the total of all the selected line items above it. So we specified both the presentation and calculation structures in one single operation. We will now do the same for current assets.
that completes the calculations and presentation structure within the assets block and within the current assets block that is nested within it. We will now do the same for the liabilities and shareholders deficit block, and after that, the current liabilities block and the shareholders deficit block, which are nested within it. That completes the tagging for calculations and structure in the balance sheet. Notice that the tagging now includes taglets that assert the calculations and presentation relationships. As another example of specifying calculations and structure, let's consider the cash flow statement. We will start by asserting that net increase in cash is the summation of all line items above it. To do so, select the line items from net loss through net increase in cash, and shift click the structure button, as we have done before. Since the first selected item is not a heading, this does not create any presentation structure, and only establishes calculation relationships. Now. Establish the calculation and presentation structure for the operating activities block. Next, we will address the adjustments to reconcile net loss block. Since this block does not include a total, we will insert only the presentation structure by simply clicking the structure button instead of shift clicking it. Do the same for the changes in operating assets and liabilities block. That completes the operating activities block. Without further comment, I will now complete the calculation and presentation relationships in the investing activities and financing activities blocks. As before, I will do this by selecting the line items in these blocks and shift clicking the structure button. Finally, I will establish the presentation relationships in the supplemental disclosures. That completes the calculations and presentation relationships in the cash flows statement. Using these procedures, you can specify calculation relationships throughout the filing. Once the Word document has been tagged, click the Send button in the Word ribbon. This sends the filing to Edgar Suite for further processing. Edgar Suite displays the tagging and validation report, as well as the filing's presentation tree. We can examine the presentation tree to get an overall XBRL view of the filing. The tagging and validation report displays an analysis of the filing. Informative messages and warnings are in blue color, while errors are shown in red. In this case, the report lists that there are some unused elements. This is not a problem and is often normal. Edgar Suite automatically removes unused elements from the final submission files. There are some calculation errors. We will attend to these shortly. The report also shows an analysis of fundamental accounting concepts as they are observed in the filing. Although this does not impact Edgar validation, 
it sometimes helps identify subtle discrepancies in the filing, and is a very useful tool for improving the quality of your filings. Also shown is an analysis of how well the facts reported in the filing observe fundamental accounting relationships. Again, this is not required for Edgar validation, but it indicates how well the filing and tagging conform to accounting best practices. That was a quick rundown of some of the information in the tagging and validation report. Now, let's revisit the calculation errors we saw earlier. There is a $200 discrepancy in the totaling of current assets and assets. Now, one of the nicest features in Edgar Suite is that the validation report is interactive. Clicking an error immediately takes you directly to where that error occurs in the Word document. In this case, I will click the number reported for current assets, that is, 26414. Notice that Edgar Suite has taken me to the total current assets in the Word document, and the number is highlighted. Checking these numbers indicates that this was a typo in the filing. The correct number is 26214. I will make the correction. If there were additional errors, we would correct them the same way. Then, click Send to resend the corrected filing to Edgar Suite. The new tagging and validation report is displayed. Notice, the errors are gone, and the filing is now good. Once the tagging has been validated, you can render the filing by switching to the Filing tab in the Edgar Suite window. Select the filing formats to be produced by checking the appropriate checkboxes. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will select all three possible formats, that is, traditional HTML, traditional XBRL, and inline XBRL, which combines both into a single rendering. Now, click Produce All to create the filing in all these formats, as well as each rendering. The software immediately creates the filing in all three formats and then renders each format right on your computer. The XBRL renderings use the same rendering engine that is used by the SEC on the Edgar website, so you can see the filing exactly as it will appear on Edgar when submitted. The whole process typically takes less than a minute, and then, a rendering report is displayed. Notice that there were no rendering issues. We will close this report and look at the rendered results. Here is the traditional HTML filing displayed in the browser window. Here is the traditional XBRL rendering. This rendering is interactive, just as it is on Edgar. So, for example, clicking a line item displays the details about the underlying tag ink. At the bottom of the rendering, Edgar Suite includes a summary of element counts, produced by the SEC renderer. Edgar Suite also appends a content summary, at the end of the rendering. This summary listing is interactive. Clicking an item in the list, immediately takes you to that position in the rendering. The SEC viewer, also produces a rendering of the tagging in Excel format. Edgar Suite displays that as well, opened in Microsoft Excel, as shown here.
And finally, here is the inline XBRL rendering, produced and shown by Edgar Sweet right on your computer. Like the traditional rendering, the inline XBRL rendering is also interactive and fully functional, just like it would be on Edgar when submitted. Hovering the mouse over a red marker shows the underlying tagging, and clicking a marker displays additional details. For example, document type. period and date. A number in a financial statement. A parenthetical number. A block tag note. A detail in a narrative. Another block tag note. Another detail. And so on. Note that the inline XBRL document is the complete document, not just the financial statements and notes. That completes the review of all the renderings. Now that the filing has been saved and rendered in different formats, the filing folder contains several HTML and XBRL files, in addition to the original Word documents. Fortunately, Edgar Suite automatically picks out, assembles, and submits the required files. Simply right-click any file, and send to Edgar Pack which is the automated assembly and submission module in Edgar Suite. Click Refresh Attachment List to bring in the files to be submitted. Notice that Edgar Pack has picked out all the files required for a traditional HTML and XBRL filing. To file using inline XBRL, simply check the inline XBRL checkbox. Notice that Edgar Pack has now selected the files required for an inline XBRL submission. Notice also that some of the fields in this window, such as the filer CIK and CCC and SRO symbol, are already filled in. That's because Edgar Suite has saved this information from the company's prior filings. You have to enter such constant information only once. Edgar Suite remembers, and uses it, in subsequent filings, automatically. We will proceed to enter the remaining fields, such as live or test submission, and reporting period. All required submission information is now in place. Click the Submit button to submit the filing. Edgar Suite connects to the SEC website and displays the progress as it uploads the filing to Edgar. It then displays the accession number returned by the Edgar system, providing confirmation of the submission. The accession number is also recorded in the filing folder, providing a permanent record of the submission. So, in this video, we demonstrated the preparation and submission of a complete SEC Edgar filing in traditional XBRL as well as inline XBRL formats using Edgar Suite software.